In one of the previous examples, we went from having a set of equations in a state space to the block diagram representation of that system of equations. In this example here, we are going to do the opposite. We have this block diagram, and the idea is to construct a state space representation of this same system. How can we do that? Well, let's analyze this system. We have two integrators. These integrators are not in cascade, meaning that we are probably integrating two different variables. And you are integrating those variables only once. Hence, this suggests that this system can be described as a set of two first-order differential equations. And based on this observation, we can now identify exactly where on this block diagram the state variables are. One of them could be here, right after the integrator. Let's call this one x1. We know that in the state space model, we have the state variable itself and the derivative. So we can also identify the derivative of x1, which is, in this case, just before the integrator. This is x1 dot. Now, here I just committed a mathematical crime because I'm mixing two different notations. x dot defines the de derivative of x in the temporal domain, but this whole block diagram is expressed in the frequency domain. But for simplicity, I'm going to write x dot 1. Of course, this should have been x of s times s, which is the derivative of x1 of s. Right? But for simplicity, let's accept this monstrosity of having temporal domain and Laplace domain in the same representation. If this is x1 dot, this is x1, and you can apply the same analysis here, our second state variable is probably right there after the integrator. This is x2. And if this is x2, this is x2 dot. Very well, our job is pretty much done now. All we have to do is to create first order differential equations, one for x1 dot, one for x2 dot, and we wish to express x1 dot as a function of x1 and x2. So the only derivative of in that expression needs to be x1 dot. In the same way, when you look for an expression for x2 dot, x2 dot can only be a function of x1 and x2. And no other derivative should show in that equation. So let's see how we can do that. Let's just start with x1. x1 is dot is here. So if x1 dot is there, what can we write? X, we can say that at this point in the system is u of t minus k times x2. And this is the first expression we have. This is sufficient for x1 dot. Now what, x, what is x2 dot? x2 dot is x2 times d negative, so it's negative x2 times d with the signal injected here, plus the signal on top there, which is plus x1 dot times f, yeah, this is the top branch here, plus this part here, which is a times x1. Now we have a problem in the second expression because we have the derivative of x2 and we also have the derivative of x1. We need to get rid of this derivative of x1. How do we do that? Well, now we can simply replace x1 from the first equation into the second. So this is equation 1, this is equation 2. By putting now 1 into 2, we get x2 dot equals to negative x2 times d plus x1 dot is this whole part here, u minus kx2, all times f plus ax1. We can now factor out this x2. We have x2 dot equals to ax1 plus negative d minus k times f all times x2 
and plus u times f. And here we have the third expression. This is the expression for x2 dot. Now notice that x2 dot is only a function of the states themselves and not their derivatives. So equation 3 and equation 1 are sufficient now to come up with the state space matrices for this system. We also need to identify the output. We know that the input is u, the output is y. So what is the output? This will be equation 4. The output is y of s, which is x2 times b, or y of t. Let's call that y x2 times b. And this is the output of the system now. So here we have the first equation x1 dot, the second equation is x2 dot, and the fourth equation is the output y. So now I can start to represent this in a matrix format. x dot equals to a times x plus b times u. And our x, we're going to define it as x1, x2. The derivative is again a element-wise operation, so it's x1 dot and x2 dot, and this is equal to a times x. x being again x1, x2. What do we have there? Let's start with x1 dot. For x1 dot, we have no x1, it doesn't depend on x1, only depends on x2 and u. So this is going to be for the first element here, 0, and for the second element we have negative k. So this is a, this is x, now let's do plus b times u, the input of the system. And we see that this shows x1 dot has a u of t here, so now here we have 1 for x1 dot. Right. Now let's look at x2 dot. For x2 dot, we're going to look at equation 3. What do you have there? We see that x2 dot depends on x1. The coefficient here is a. So what it goes in this matrix here is simply a. And we have for x2 negative d minus kf. And we have u times f. So the input is multiplied by f, which means that in the matrix B here, we have f in the second cell. This is this expression. Now, this, here are, are all the coefficients for A. If you multiply these matrices out, we'll go back to equation 1 for x1 and for equation 3 for x2. Very well, so this is half of our job. Now we need an expression for the output. The output of our system is defined here, is x2 times b. And in the state space representation, we need now an expression in the following format. y equals to c times x plus d times u. u is again the input. So here we have y time is equal to c, is a vector that we're going to define times x, x is x1, x2, plus d times u. What do you have? We simply have y of t equals to x2 times b. So this is 0, this is b, and the input doesn't appear in equation 4, so here we have for d, 0 and 0. So here is the matrix C, here is the matrix D. And here we are, the first equation for state space is there, the second equation is here, and now we have a full model of this block diagram now represented in state space form.